seems like no matter what kind of shower you have, whether you've got a bathroom with a shower that has a tub, you're going to have problems with water. Even if you have a shower with a built-in walk-in shower, all glassed in and everything, you're still going to have a problem. And I'll tell you, the main problem that I've seen with those is that even the ones, especially the ones that go floor to ceiling that are all closed off, well, there's no vent inside. So the only way you can dry it out is to leave the door open. And if the door is open, all the water is going to come right down on the floor. Well, if you close the door, it'll take forever for the for the water to drain off all the walls. And typically, more mold and mildew grow because it's closed off and more or less sealed. So it's a, a real difficult proposition. I like to have the door open so the air can circulate in there and dry it out a lot faster than and then have the fan on. The fan is almost never inside the shower. The fan is always out inside the room. If you leave the door open, the drip rail really helps because all the water that's flowing down the glass just funnels right back into the shower area and goes down the drain like it should. Today what we're going to do is we're going to make a homemade drip rail. Now a drip rail goes on um, walk-in shower doors. Most walk-in showers that have a pivoting door, the problem is, is a lot of them, they have a piece on the bottom that drains the water back into the tub, but once it's open, all that water coming down the glass just drains out on the floor. And some of the higher end doors have a built-in drip rail, but uh, probably about 75-80% of them don't. What I've done is I've just taken a, a regular piece of molding, I've cut it off about here, about a three quarters of an inch or so, and I've rounded all the corners so there's nothing sharp on it, and I've got double stick adhesive that I've put on the lip for mounting it onto either the glass, some of them are glass, some of the bases have a um, metal piece on the bottom, but either way we could have put it on the outside or we could have put that on the inside just depending on on how we want to do it. And so it's not going to, and I've, I've put some uh, color on, on this edge so that you can see it, and, but usually you just leave it transparent and this uh, double stick adhesive uh, we can get that in transparent as well. And so the only thing left to do here, here with this is to, um, uh, is to fold it over. I'm just going to fold it over and, and shape it into a U. Uh, this might be too wide a U, but it shouldn't matter because all we're going to do is take it down to a few of the uh, stores that sell shower with shower doors and, um, and see if it'll fit and see how they're made. But I know that it'll fit. We can mount it directly onto it so on, and this will go on the inside directly onto the inside of, of a shower door or if we had some of the uh, plate glass doors uh, we could have put the um, adhesive on the inside and then pasted the adhesive on the outside now the the key to making a drip rail work really well is to um, when, when you put it on, I'll get a piece of glass here. This is, um, you should really be able to see this. Um, when you put it on, you have to um, uh, put it on so that um, on the inside, where the door is going to pivot, it has to go beyond the glass so that the water will drain back into the shower area. And on this end is it has to be a little bit lower, like five degrees lower than it is on the outside. That way it'll, water will follow its um, natural downhill path. And as I said, this channel could have been much smaller and to make it smaller, all I would do is, is just change it. You know, like this is so simple. If we wanted to change it, we can change it just like that. And that would make it smaller so that the channel is thinner. The main thing is that the corners are rounded so um, nobody's going to get injured by it and the, the beauty of this as opposed to some of the ones that are built in is this one will flex without breaking so we're going to leave this now and go through a few stores and see what they've got here we are in uh, what are we home depot and it's the typical shower stall door and you'll notice that there's no way to stop the water and make it flow back into the stall. So if you put this on at a slight angle, 
and cut it off right where it needs to be. It'll channel the water back into the um, back into the shower stall. I had to paint this one or color it blue just so you can see it because typically you can't. Here's another one. Let's see what this one is like. Same design. So you'd have to just add it right there and not just shape it however you want so that no matter how far it comes out it'll still come in. Another one. This one has a nice metal one that's already on. It should have a stop right here on the inside. It does. The rest don't have anything like this one. Well, that's one. Three out of four don't have so Now this would go all the all way, way down, the end, yeah. and then this is supposed to be higher, and this is supposed to be a little bit lower, okay. so that it'll oh, as you open, it'll, it'll pour back in. So it'll pour back in, right? Oh, cool. What I'll do is get transparent double stick tape to go on there, and um, Bob's your uncle. No kidding. You know? So, and this is just one thing you do with the molding. There's a million different things. You know, like most things that are made are only made to do one, one thing yeah, yeah, and not did. bug me. Yeah. It's like weld bond, you know, like mm -hmm. weld bond yep. is an adhesive and I used it way back when you bought it. You got this little book that told you all the oh, million and okay. one yeah, things that yeah, you yeah. could do with it. And I thought, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have those moldings over there that are L-shaped, but they're all for going around the edge of a um, piece of plywood or on a shelf edge. Yeah. You know, those. You know what we use them for? Mm. But you know, when you're doing a back for a shower, you know, the mold, the mold, these yeah. molded ends. Yeah. We put them along that molded end and then put the tile. Ah. Yeah, if you want a tile on either side, and it keeps it from the water from going on that uh -huh. way. Uh-huh. Well, you could do that with mine, too.